Now let's think about some inflammatory conditions. And these are quite easy because they all end in itis. But they're all things that you're going to come across really quite frequently in your clinical practice. So the first one is appendicitis. Inflammation of the appendix where you're going to get pain normally localising down here in the right iliac fossa. Another one is arthritis. This is inflammation of the joints. Joints can become very painful. There's two main forms that you're going to see. The immunological form is rheumatoid arthritis and the wear and tear degenerative form where the joints just degenerate and the cartilage is lost is osteoarthritis. Balanitis. You know what balanitis means? Balanitis is inflammation of the glands penis and it can sometimes be caused by glucosuria in unrecognized diabetes mellitus. So balanitis, inflammation of the glands penis. Bronchitis, of course, we see all the time. You can get an acute bronchitis caused by a viral or a bacterial infection, usually viral infections, at least in the UK. And of course, you can get chronic bronchitis due to inhalation of smoke, chronic bronchitis, which often goes with emphysema. Cellulitis. Cellulitis is a superficial inflammation of the tissues, but it can be very serious. It's nearly always bacterial, but we do need to take cellulitis very seriously because it can spread very quickly and it can cause sepsis and death. Cholecystitis. Cholie means to do with bile, cyst is bladder, so cholecystitis is inflammation of the gallbladder. Very often caused by obstruction of the cystic duct with a gallstone, with bile stones. Colitis is inflammation of the colon. So with colitis you could have a simple viral infection or a bacterial infection, or an inflammatory, an inflammatory condition such as Crohn's disease or indeed ulcerative colitis. So colitis, inflammation of the colon. Conjunctivitis. Well, the conjunctiva is the layer in front of the eye. So conjunctivitis, you get a red eye, very scratchy, very painful, unpleasant condition, usually caused by bacterial infection. Cystitis. Cyst means a fluid filled space. But cystitis means inflammation of the urinary bladder. Quite common in women, does occur in men as well. Nearly always caused by bacterial infection. And the key clinical feature is dysuria, pain passing urine. It feels hot when the urine is passed, burning sensation when passing urine in cystitis. Tell the patient to drink lots and consider giving them antibiotics. Dermatitis is sometimes called eczema and dermatitis simply means inflammation of the skin. It could be how caused by a chemical, it could be caused by an allergic reaction, it could be anything. Dermatitis simply means inflammation of the skin. And the terms dermatitis and eczema basically are interchangeable terms, that they really mean the same thing. But dermatitis is the more descriptive term. Encephalitis. Well, encephalitis is inflammation of the brain itself. Could be caused by viral infection. Rabies, for example, can cause encephalitis. Quite a serious condition, encephalitis. Endocarditis. Well, the endocardium is the inner layer of the heart, and inflammation of that is endocarditis. Usually caused by bacterial infection, very often of a streptococcal nature, um, sometimes from infection from the mouth. More common in patients who've suffered from rheumatic heart disease and rheumatic fever in the past. Gastritis simply means inflammation of the stomach. So if you've got a bad tummy because you've got a viral infection or a bacterial infection or because you've drank too much alcohol, gastritis. 
gastroenteritis means inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract. So that could be the stomach, the small intestine, or the large intestine. Could be viral infection, could be bacterial infection, it could be some sort of inflammatory disease such as Crohn's disease causing gastroenteritis. Gingivitis is inflammation of the gums, usually caused by a buildup of plaque around about the junction between the teeth and the gums, gingivitis. Glossitis is inflammation of the tongue itself. It can be allergic, it can be a direct chemical insult if you've eaten something that's uh, causing inflammation. Or it can be fungal infection, that's probably a do common one that you do see actually, fungal infection in the mouth. Big, red, swollen tongue, the patient won't feel like eating. And also glossitis can be caused in some situations by iron deficiency. Labyrinthitis is inflammation of the labyrinth system in the inner ear. Usually viral and it can cause vertigo, the patient feels dizzy and uh, unable to get their balance. Very distressing clinical feature for the patient, vertigo. Laryngitis, inflammation of the larynx, very often with loss of the voice. Meningitis, of course, is inflammation of the meningeal layers which surround the brain and the spinal cord. As you know, it's the dura mater, the arachnoid mater and the pia mater. The patient can be unwell they have a stiff neck. The disease can be viral, but it can also be the much more serious, life-threatening, bacterial form of the condition causing meningitis. Myocarditis is inflammation of the myocardium itself. And this can be caused by alcohol. Rarely it can be caused by autoimmunity. But the time we do see this, tragically, often it can affect young people and it can be caused by viral infection, particularly Coxsackie viral infection. And actually in the UK, the most common indication for heart transplant is myocardial damage caused by viral infection, often in relatively young people causing myocarditis. One reason it's very important to rest when the patients, when a patient is unwell. They, any patient who's unwell with an infection should not be out taking exercise, they should be, they should be resting. Now esophagitis is inflammation of the esophagus. If you drink things which are very hot or you drink strong alcohol, that can cause inflammation at the top of the esophagus. More commonly you get gastrointestinal, gastroesophageal rather, reflux disease where stomach acids reflux back, for example, if there's a hiatus hernia into the esophagus causing inflammation. And chronic inflammation of the esophagus can lead on to a condition called Barrett esophagus, which can lead on to esophageal carcinoma. Osteomyelitis is infection or inflammation inside the medullary cavity of the bone. And actually, in my experience, it's always caused by bacterial infection. So if there's an open fracture, or a pen well, any open fracture where the bone is penetrated or the bone comes out onto the surface, there's a risk of the medullary cavity of the bone becoming infected. We have to try and avoid this if we possibly can because it's very hard to get rid of once it's established. So osteomyelitis, in bacterial infection in the bone, do try and prevent it. Otitis, what does that one mean? Otitis means inflammation of the ears. So it could be otitis externa in the external auditory meatus, or it could be otitis media, very painful condition in the middle ear. I remember I once had otitis media and the pain was really bad. It's like a sharp toothache pain. And then one night I just felt like a warm trickle in my ear as my eardrum burst and that relieved the pressure as the infected fluid leaked out. That's okay. Your tympanic membrane will recover, even though it might take a couple of months, but it will recover. Just don't go underwater while you're waiting for it to, uh, to get better. So otitis is the ear. Pancreatitis, of course, is the 
pancreas. What normally happens in pancreatitis is there there is activation of pancreatic enzymes before they get into the duodenum. The activated pancreatic enzymes can start to auto-digest the pancreas and it can be a very serious, indeed it can indeed be a life-threatening condition, pancreatitis. Peritonitis, this is inflammation of the peritoneal sacs or the peritoneal membranes which form the peritoneal sac in the abdominal cavity. Peritonitis can be caused by perforation or penetrating injury or release of blood or bile, anything that causes chemical inflammation in the peritoneal cavity. And again, especially if it's caused by perforation and you get gastrointestinal contents leaking into the peritoneal sac, of course that is a surgical emergency, an absolute, immediate, life-threatening condition. Pneumonitis means inflammation of the lung tissue. And usually we would call this pneumonia. It's usually caused by bacterial, bacterial infection at the level of the alveoli. Pneumonitis, usually caused by pneumonia. Poliomyelitis, I'm hopeful in my lifetime to see the eradication of the polio virus because I've seen many tragic cases of paralyzed and disabled children as a result of inflammation of the nerves with infection with polio virus. Hopefully we can eradicate this horrible viral infection of the nerves. Prostatitis, inflammation of the prostate gland, can be bacterial. Very often no bacteria are actually identified. Pain where you would expect it in between the top of the legs in, the, uh, in men. And sometimes you can get blood as well in the ejaculate. Hematospermia can be an indication of prostatitis. Can be quite a difficult infection to get rid of prostatitis actually. You might need to give antibiotics for really quite long periods of time to get rid of it. Pyelonephritis is inflammation in the tissues of the kidneys. A serious infection, the patient is very ill give them plenty to drink and do treat it aggressively with antibiotics because it's a serious condition and it's especially serious in young children. If there's repeated pyelonephritis in young children this can lead to permanent scarring of the kidneys with renal failure and hypertension. So recognize infection of the kidneys and treat it at an early stage if you possibly can. Rhinitis is inflammation of the nasal cavities. Can be caused by a cold virus, a rhinovirus, I'm sure you've all had that where you get a running nose. And it can also be caused by allergic conditions as well, allergic rhinitis as you get for example with hay fever. Salpingitis is inflammation of what used to be called the fallopian tubes, what we now call the uterine tubes. Usually it's an ascending infection through the vagina, through the cervix, through the uterus, as part of a pelvic inflammatory disease. And part of the problem with salpingitis, especially in young women, is with some bacteria, such as chlamydia, they might not know that they've got it, and there can be progressive scarring of the uterine tubes, meaning that in later life the ovum can't get from the ovaries down through the tubes to the uterus, resulting in um, infertility. Tendonitis is inflammation of tendons. You've probably had that after you've been running or after a, after a strain injury. Tonsillitis is inflammation of the tonsils usually caused by bacterial infection. It will usually resolve, but occasionally, if the tonsils are badly damaged and scarred, then they might need to be surgically uh, resected. Urethritis is inflammation of the urethra. And this is most commonly caused by gonococcal bacterial sexually transmitted infection. Fortunately, it responds very well to 
antibiotics. Vasculitis just means inflammation of the blood vessels. So you can get arterial vasculitis caused by autoimmune reactions, or you might see vasculitis as a result of a contaminated intravenous cannula. We need to have a high index of suspicion for vasculitis whenever someone is receiving intravenous therapy. And we're nearly at the end of the alphabet. Vulvitis, of course, the vulval area is the area underneath the labia around about the vagina. The most common cause of vulvitis is probably fungal infection with some bacterial infection. And again, that can be common in undiagnosed diabetes. And also it can be an early presentation in immunodeficiency disease, such as that caused by the human immunodeficiency virus. So, so that was just a quick romp through a few things that end in uh, itis. Uh, I'm sure you'll come across lots more in your, your clinical practice. If it ends in itis, it means inflammation of. But notice it doesn't always mean infection of. There's all different types of inflammation. As we've looked at before, it can be mechanical, it can be chemical, it can be immunological, it can be thermal. The suffix itis at the end of the word simply means inflammation of.